Hi there. A couple of you have asked me to clarify the relation between specification testing and inference. So that's what this little video clip is is on. So uh, it re it refers to the diagnostic testing uh, and robust inference lecture. So let's assume we start we start with a regression model by our good old and trusted friend y equals x beta plus epsilon where all of these guys are vectors and matrices of the appropriate dimensions so let's say we start by um, let's call this model one let's say we start by estimating model one with all s with all s so what we what we get from here is we get a beta hat or less beta hat and we also get a an estimated variance covariance matrix an estimated version of that for beta hat and that is uh, calculated by sigma squared x prime x inverse and we need the estimated version of this <coughs> sigma squared so the question is now can we perform inference on beta so can we use let's call this two the uh, variance covariance matrix to perform inference on beta can we use two to perform inference on beta question mark and the answer to to this is a yes if the Gauss Markov assumption sold and a no if these assumptions do not hold. So the question is then how do we test for the these hold and in particular what I want to look at here is the aspects of heteroscedasticity and autocorrelation. So we need to perform some diagnostic testing. Okay, diagnostic or specification diagnostic or specification testing and why do we need that to find out whether these assumptions hold or not and I'm going to concentrate here on heteroscedasticity as a possible breach of the assumptions and autocorrelation which is another possible reason for a breach of the gauss markov assumption so let's start with heteroscedasticity how do we test this okay so um so we apply the preuss pagan or white test okay we know that the white test is a special form of the preuss pagan uh, apply the Proche-Pagan or Y test and the result of this is either going to be um, heteroscedasticity or no heteroscedasticity. Okay, so the test will tell us uh, whether there is heteroscedasticity or not. In terms of uh, the autocorrelation, we uh, will apply the what we call the LM test, and as a result of this test, we will be able to say whether there is autocorrelation or no autocorrelation. So the question then remains. Under what situation can we use, or what, what consequence does any of these decisions have 
for inference. We know, so that was the, so the question is now, what does that mean for inference or implication for inference? So we'll concentrate on inference on one parameter only. We know what we, uh, if we have a hypothesis on one parameter, what we want to calculate is a t-test. Let's say we are interested in the j element of beta to then calculate the estimated value here, a value from the null hypothesis divided by the standard error of beta j hat. So the, and uh, furthermore, what we need is we need to know how this guy is distributed. Okay, so this standard error here, this can come from three sources. Okay, this can either come from equation two. Equation two, recall, that was our standard formula for the variance covariance matrix of beta hat or it can be calculated as right standard errors or as new rest standard errors so the first thing to recognize is let me just scroll just a little bit up here again the name white appears on two occasions, up here and up here. It is indeed the same white, but uh, it's different contributions by the, uh, by the same econometrician. Up here, the name described the white test, test for heteroscedasticity. Down here, it is a way of calculating standard errors. Okay, these are different things. So you have to be aware of these two different contributions. So, but still we we haven't answered the question yet. What we basically need to answer in which situation do we use which of these two, which of these three different versions of standard errors and in which situation do we have what sort of distribution. Okay, so that is basically the, uh, the task. So let us just draw a little table. You see here, we basically have for autocorrelation two possible outcomes and for heteroscedasticity two possible outcomes. So let's just put them in a table. We either have no autocorrelation or autocorrelation. And we have either no heteroscedasticity or we have heteroscedasticity. So that gives us four different cases. Let's start with this case, okay, this first this first case here. This is basically the case where the Gauss-Markov assumptions hold, okay. In this case we use for the standard error calculation we use the normal standard errors. We use equation 2 calculate the standard errors and the t-test is t-distributed. Okay, so that was the, the ideal case. Now what happens for instance if we still have no autocorrelation but we find heteroscedasticity. So in this case we have to calculate the standard errors as per white. Okay, so we need to calculate white standard errors. And in this case, the t-test, how is it distributed? It is normally distributed, but importantly, in standard normal. I haven't written down how many degrees of freedom for the t-distribution, but you know that. Here, so white, use the white standard errors, and the t-test is asymptotically normally distributed, importantly, asymptotically. So now let's go to the next case, this guy here. So we have autocorrelation, but no heteroscedasticity. 
which standard errors are we going to use? We will use the new vest standard errors. So we need to calculate the new vest standard errors and our t-test, how is it distributed? Again, it is standard normally distributed, but only for sufficiently large samples. And then the fourth case, what happens if you have autocorrelation and heteroscedasticity? Well, we will again have to use the new VEST standard errors. New VEST standard errors take care of autocorrelation and heteroscedasticity. And again, the t-test is normally distributed asymptotically. Okay, so this is how we how this all hangs together, okay? Specification testing and robust inference. And this little table, if you understand this table here, you're all good, okay? Then you've understood basically the message of that, of that lecture. Okay, I hope that was of help.